Okay. Okay. With the, the, the TAs and, and friends are, are still trying to understand what language is. So we have to go back because we have a new, maybe better story. The question, when I say what language is, I mean there is language and it's saying, which is this silence and this stillness, which is clearly not a question of words. Language isn't talking and it isn't saying anything and it isn't even made up of words. But somehow, when it does its thing and then we respond, some of what we do, at least, is we make utterances. We actually use words. So, how to sort all that out? Well, there's a, see, there, there seems to be one sense of language in which language is used in a very general way, where I think it covers all the practices and their style and the way they open up and, 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 and coordinate a clearing so that anything could show up that we could see or deal with or talk about at all. When he's talking on that level, then he talks about language as the house of being. And he does that early on in 45 in what you don't read the letter on humanism. But he's still doing it in 59 in uh, The Way to Language. And he's doing it here in The Turning, which is sort of in between. It's in 49. You should realize, and I'm going to come back to this because it is important at one point to, to understand that Heidegger's not waffling around. We're <coughs> jumping around in Heidegger's thinking. But we, we did, because of the thematic way it was put together, have to, or we maybe didn't have to, you know, we could have done the turning earlier. But anyway, what we did was we, we did the way to language, which is 1958, and, no, that's not the way to language, where's the way to language, 59, and then we went back 10 years, and they're doing the turning, which is 49. And now we're going to go forward again, almost 10 years, to 57, to do this last thing on uh, the, uh, I never, the question of being, I never can remember, Zion Father, okay, question of being. Uh, now, so, and, but the house of being story is something I think he would hold on to all the time. He certainly had it in 45, and he has it here in uh, uh the turning which is 49 and I bet it shows up other places too so we better have a story about that and here he's talking about it in the turning where he says uh, at the bottom of 40 they, he says prepared we means build for the coming to presence of being, the abode in the midst of whatever is in which being brings itself and its essence to utterance in language. So being isn't utterance in language. It gets brought to utterance in language through us. La now he says language, and that's this the, the important thing, it, which is not just utterance, it turns out. Language first gives to every purposeful deliberation its ways and its byways. Without language, there would be lacking to every doing, every dimension in which it could bestir itself and be effective. In view of this, language is never primarily the expression of thinking, feeling, and willing. Language is the primal dimension within which man's essence is able to correspond to being at all and its claim and in corresponding to belong to being. Now, there are lots of things to sort out there, what all that means. So, being comes to utterance in language, that's fine. But language isn't just utterance. It's something which is behind, makes utterance possible and all kinds of coping possible. It's, a, it's this dimension in which everything becomes effective. You, could think you can be effective in acting and thinking and so forth. And, and the dimension, I think, is like it's like a disclosive space. A dimension is some, uh, I just can't find other words, some domain, some field of relevance, anything you want like that, in which then you can act and you can talk and you can point things out and things will show up as something. And language is structuring, well, structuring is a bad word, is, is uh, 
coordination, coordinating or fitting together the practices so as to make these dimensions or disclosive spaces possible. I'll read you quotes about that in a minute. So language is not the... Exp- well, for one thing, language is never primarily the expression of thinking, feeling, and will. And we've read that before. That's, that's, that's just the simple point that it is never the <coughs> expression of something inner going outer. Because Heidegger's never... Yeah. It is... Did I say never? I said never. I could be never primarily. primarily. Sorry. It, 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 it can be. I mean, it, I can have... a. But this is back to the Sesame Street thing. I could see a rose and have a thought rose and say rose, thereby expressing my thought and get the, the girl in the picture to have the, the thought rose. I mean, we do it, but that is the least interesting thing language does. We only do that once we've already got a clearing, once the practices have already been coordinated and have a style and something can show up as a rose so that I can point it out and so forth. So, that, so that's the sense in which language isn't primarily ever any kind of expression of inner to outer. So language is the primal dimension. And we've still got that problem. We read this before. That's this unfanguished dimension. It's got to mean something like basic, within which man's essence is first able to correspond at all to being. That is, that we are able to uh, relate to anything as anything, that we, and correspond to being and its claim, that's even stronger. I think that means feel the required to get in sync with the style of the practices and articulate them. In, and, and that is first able to correspond at all to being. I'll say a moment about correspond in a minute. And its claim and in corresponding to belong to being. Okay, now we have to say a word about correspond. Somebody happily pointed out to me how confusing that is. Since way back in basic questions, we remember that the correspondence story is, uh, is just a story about truth that Heidegger thinks is derivative and in, and in a certain way disastrous because it makes it seem as if there's a reality out there independent of us and then we have uh, representations and they either correspond to that reality or not, and that's been the view of truth, he says, since Aristotle. What's he doing talking about correspondence here? Well, it's an artifact of the translation. The, the word that gets translated correspondence back in basic questions is a German word, übereinstimmung, which is correspondence. All right. Here Heidegger's making his kind of deep pun, taking it apart and thinking of it as a way of speaking back to language, of responding. Heidegger hears this as response, as a kind of response. Counter saying. What? Counter saying. Counter saying, right. right. Yes, speaking up against, but not as opposed, but as a response. And that, so this gets translated correspondence in basic questions. This gets translated correspondence here in the turning and that's very confusing but you just so this is this is a good kind of corresponding it's not a kind of corresponding that the, the tradition has messed uh, put in as, a, as an understanding of what truth is yeah it shows up in the question concerning technology also on page 23 and I'm wondering if it's the same word and the same well let's look at the context and then we can look at the German if I have it with me don't think I brought it with me where on the page? Where, uh, okay. There's a break in the page, about three fourths down. Yeah. Um, yeah. To answer, to respond in the sense of correspond. Oh, I'm sure it is because it's the same translator and it's the same kind of situation. 
uh, we want to correspond to the essence of what's being asked about is respond means to respond in the sense of correspond surely a sense question cannot be otherwise if there was a different translator we could worry about it but you now that's and so you just got to realize that, that, that here correspondence is a good thing it's the way human beings respond to languages and beings or in my talk the styles requirement that they get in tune with it and articulate it in whatever way that is appropriate. This primal corresponding expressly carried out is thinking. Well, now we're talking not just about any old corresponding to what what the situation requires, but specifically corresponding to the style, namely to the current truth of being. And this is an old story. Uh, We've heard it since, since Origin of the Work of Art. The job of thinkers is to find the words that correspond to and articulate and uh, bring out in their into their mo- own most, he would say later, the current style. Or, if they're really deep thinkers, the future style, depending on whether they're articulating kinds of thinkers or reconfiguring <coughs> kinds of thinkers. So, this primal corresponding is carried out by thinking. Through thinking, we first learn to dwell in the realm in which there comes to pass the restorative surmounting of the destiny of being, the surmounting of inframing. Well, that's not, of course, the only job of thinking. Thinkers are, have been around since uh, Anaximander, putting the understanding of being, the truth of being, into words corresponding to it. But now the job of the thinker is to get find the right words for surmounting technology. Of course, we know who that is again. The thinker that's trying to do that is Heidegger. He's named Bastan, that is resources, and he's named and framing, which is Gestell, uh, uh, and he made the flourish when he named Bastel because he's trying to respond to technology in such a way as it will get clear what it is so that we can get into a free relation to it instead of just being driven about by it without knowing what, thinking this is just how reality is and we better get with it because there'd be this push toward efficiency is what any sensible person sees is what has always been required of everybody only finally we've got it and now we better do it uh, so I think that's all I want to say about how House of Being comes up in here but I thought I would go back and you can look this up to uh, the way to language because remember in there you get another version of the same story which is that language does the job of fitting together the clearing. Only the t- translation says structuring the clearing. Structuring is misleading because you might think that you could abstract the structure from what is structured. I mean, you can do that with the structure of a building or something. You can say, well, here's the structure and they made it in steel. But uh, the, the, certainly the clearing hasn't got that kind of structure. Kant thought it did. I mean, the, that would be too old, old-fashioned. It would be like you could find the what metaphysicians tried to do. Kant thought that the categories, the twelve categories, were the structure of. He didn't call it the clearing, but he said you know everything that could show up had to show up in the structure of these categories, and he thought the categories were divorceable from what showed up. So, but Heidegger wants to say something that's more. It's, it's the, the style is not a structure that you can abstract from the practice. The style is the way the practices are coordinated. So, and this is what he's talking about at the end of the third paragraph on the way to language. You don't have it, but I'll read it to you. The design is the whole of the traits of that drawing which, it, he says, structures and prevails throughout the open. We will have to say fits together is the German word. I mentioned this already, though German word is like the word for fugue where a fugue is a complicated structure where everything is jointed together. So the drawing which structures and prevails throughout the open, the design is the whole of the traits of that drawing which fits together and prevails throughout the open, open, the open unlocked freedom of language. 
don't know quite what that means. Let's try the next sentence. The design is the drawing of the being of language, the fitting together of a showing in which are joined the speakers and their speaking. What is spoken in, of it is unspoken in all that is given in the speaking. Well, I think that's about how the background structure is the ba- is, un- is the background and is unspoken and makes possible all the speaking. And that's, again, a view of language way beyond language having anything yet, in anything I've said, specially to do with words. I've just been talking about how all these practices are coordinated so they have a style. I haven't said anything about linguistic practices. So then you might well wonder, but I have another quote. Let's see if I need to read it to it just so we can go into the next. Well, no, I better read it. On 126, I'm still explaining. At the end of the one, two, third paragraph, saying pervades and fits together the openness of that clearing which every appearance must seek out and every disappearance leave behind and in which every present or absence absent being must show say and announce itself that doesn't mean language but that's very clear that when language is the house of being whatever language is it's what fits together the whole clearing and so the question you want to ask is what in the world does that have to do with language and words at all? And when I got to this the last time, I made, I think, the wrong move. I said, well, it's the old Heidegger mistake of saying the condition of the possibility of X is primordial, X. So whatever makes it possible for us to talk must be sort of primordial talking. I think he got over that. He apologized at one point for having said about truth that primordial truth was a kind of truth and he admitted it was misleading. can't remember when or where, but he did. So I don't think here he's going to do that. So what, what, what is the relation then of language to words? Well, our latest stab at it is is that words are the best way of articulating the clearing. The thinker has to use words to articulate the clearing. The poet finds the right words to bring out the situation into its own mode. And I think pure prose is when people use language to communicate and thereby bring out other people and the situation they're in into their own mode or riches. So what I'm saying is language, actual utterance with words, turns out to be the paradigm way of bringing things out into their own, and the paradigm way of creating a disclosive space, or at least articulating one that's already trying to be there by responding to it, uh, so that in it there can be more action and talking and so forth. Yeah. When you say language there, are you talking about the words we use now? Yes, yes, sorry. It's so hard for me to get used to this other use of language, but that's important. Because it can't no. be a paradigm. I mean, language. No, no, language. no, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's words. a good thing to stop me. Words, I should keep saying. So, w- words, one wants to know what this primordial kind of language, which doesn't seem to be words, where language is the house of being <coughs> and language is what fits together the clearing, what that has to do with words. And I want to say words are the paradigm case of two things, of bringing things in the clearing out in their own most and of making a, a, articulating the whole style sort of, or even naming a whole new style into being. All of this, words do this better than anything and that's the relation between language as the house of being and, and people saying things. That, yeah. Can you say anything about why words <laughs> are the best <laughs> words? No, not a thing. Can you? Is it in principle that we can't say anything, or is it we just don't have anything? I see. Ah, I have no idea about that either. Remember what happened when I hit it. That I'd be interested to hear what you have to say, and Forrest has to say about it. When I, I just ran into a wall when all of a sudden, in the origin of the work of art, he says, "And language is the best of all the ways the truth sets itself to work." period, as if everybody should just believe it because he told us. And I couldn't think of what the argument was, though I could see that that sounds right. 
I mean, I mean, it just does seem that there's the compared to dancing and playing and uh, uh, skills of all sorts, speaking does get things out in its riches. Yeah. But I don't know what what, what to say about it. Uh, yeah, Forrest. Well, yeah. Language uh, is going to have to call. I mean, calling it names and then naming it brings things near. And so we're going to have nearness. I think it's about nearness that the words are. That we have to have things near in that sense. Yes. If we don't have the words for them. If we don't call them. They won't come near. They they're not near. They're well, that's right. that's the problem more than the answer. I mean, the question is, why can't I bring something near by doing the proper voodoo dance and get well, the God to you, come near? you may be able to, but why is saying more the better way to get it. Better. So Why does it get nearer or better or more, I mean, nearer or something like that? I, I think nearer is the right word. I don't see how voodoo dance could do such a thing. I just don't. I have no idea how it I think it's the shining piece again. That they really do shine because the words focus. Well, you're telling me, both of you, and rightly, that this is the phenomena that Heidegger's got. I wish I understood why it had to be language, but maybe that's asking too philosophical a question. Yeah? Well, I think um, it's because language is, is, has a certain kind of structure. Which language? Words. words. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it's my fault. I'm, I'm always forgetting to say words. Go ahead, words. Words have a certain kind of structure, like structuring that all these other things don't have, uh, like like dances or statues or temples, temples. even. You know, um, and I think one of the big, uh, first of all, it, it really directly mirrors, like a poet, uh, a poem directly mirrors, like sort of the way that uh, the difference works in holding things in tension, like holding things together in a sort of tension that they don't clasp. And also, it, it, it's one of the only things that can allow a negative space for, for objects that aren't present. Um, like, you can't really, like, in a dance, well, you can't even, like, in a portrait, display something that's not present to really, you, you know? Like, mm. But with language, you can. In a poem, you, you can say things that aren't there. That's so you can call, call near while preserving absence. Right. Yes, he does say that. It, it I agree. It, it makes it has a structure in which you can preserve a negative space. That's interesting, but I don't think that's all that important. If it didn't, and it could still articulate style, name, new understandings of being, uh, and so forth, that would be fine. Even if there were no, even if we could never get sort of the, the, the dinner in the in the in, in, in present and absence at the same time in the classroom by reading uh, Trockel's poem. I mean, I, you just push the problem back one. I mean, then I'd have to ask him, why is that so important that, that, that we should make it the house of being? Uh, they, 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 I don't believe that structure is the right, is the, what it is. I don't think, because I'm nothing so like that. It's, fugues have plenty of structure, but playing a box fugue isn't going to do it, apparently. Yeah, that's for Heidegger. Well, I just think, I just think of even the opposite. Like, growing up, there are things like, if your mother or father frowned at you because you let's say you did something really bad or gave you a really horrible look. You know, the horrible look will fade, but the words that they may have said in anger that were really cutting and disastrous, you, you usually keep with you. You know, you're in you go you're, to therapy, you know, and you're yeah. thirty. You're yeah. doing it again. So you're I, describing I, the phenomenon. And we want to know and why do words do that? What is it about words? Is it the noise they make? Is it the the melody of them? Is it the grammatical structure of them? A philosopher would like to know what is it about words to give them this incredible capacity? And why is it that ever, and if you knew that, you might know why only words have it. Uh, but we don't know that. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's just pure, like, grammatical. I'm not talking about just syntax. You know? hmm. I mean, I'm talking about something that I can't just. There, there's, like, more structure language than just sort of syntax. Yes, um, there is, there is. And it, all it, holds of it. Open, it holds open these spaces uh, where things can be present and absent. And I, I don't, I'm not sure if you could really sort of reconfigure things without that kind I'll of... I'll tell you what, I mean, I'm not going to go on with this wrong, but I can think of a, of a really nasty rejoinder to this. Mm -hmm. Namely, that that's, the kind of, that that's true even of the language that the, 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 the analytic philosophers talk about. Good old you know, speech acts, and, for, and, and they, I can say, uh, you know, Santa Claus, 
and even there isn't any Santa Claus, but now he's present as absent. This is what, what Frege and so forth love to talk about. I can't believe that's what Heidegger wants to talk about. Well, I mean, but couldn't that be symptomatic? Of something else, maybe, but we, haven't got, yeah, but we haven't got it yet. I mean, it just... If, if it can be done by, by the worst sort of banal language, then it can't be the, the well, we haven't got to the great well, basic thing yet. Well, but that, that should be mirrored by the banal language. I see, that's what you want to say. Okay. Um, okay. So, up, I see. Up. Okay, so they are just on to the sort of la- last dregs of this right. amazing capacity. And it's like metaphysicians, right? I mean, they have an inkling that there is something very important going yeah, on. Yeah, but and they glom on sort of the right direction of the okay. thing, but they mislocate okay. in the thing. Okay. Well, there. I still think we haven't got it, but this is the second time we've got sort of stuck on this. I and mean, if anybody can write a paper, you know, that tells me, well, let's repeat the question. Why is it language that does this? What is there about words, not language? No, I misspoke again. What is it about utterances mm-hmm. and words that make them capable of coordinating and joining up the clearing, no, sorry, no, that's the wrong level, capable of articulating the, the clearing, capable of, recon, of, of reconfiguring the clearing, capable of making dimensions, that is, disclosive spaces of all sizes. Why, why is it that words have a special capacity? What is it about words, and only words, that give them that special capacity? That's the question, isn't it? Okay. But I don't have an answer. I don't need an answer because we we can go on without that. I mean, it seems perfectly, it seems pretty straightforward that it's true that words and only words have that special capacity, not temples and dances, but uh, and or music. But, but why I don't know. Okay, I wasn't going to spend time with that because remember we just regressed right out of this book. So back to this book. The, okay, now we're t- changing to a whole new subject but we're still not connected up with last time, which we will eventually. We're connected up with some specific thing that came up last time, namely the footnote about fair guessing. That turns out to be an immense can of worms, which is just more complicated and messy than you can realize. We're back on the very first page when I said that footnote is just a tremendous mistake. You can't mix up fair guessing height with... uh, uh, the word which is uh, uh, verborgenheit that gets translated concealment. You can't mix up in the language that's being used of the translator oblivion and concealment. They are, I want to say, as opposite as night and day. That is, I'm going to, make, I'm going to argue that concealment, which is the laissez part of aletheia, where, where, where laissez literally means forgetting, but it's not going to mean just any old forgetting. That's where the translator's gone off the rails. Uh, so the laissez part of aletheia, the concealing part of unconcealment, which is, remember, the word for truth, is the most positive thing that Heidegger can think about. Whereas oblivion, vergessenheit, is about the most negative thing that Heidegger can think about. They are the opposite poles in ontology. That's what I want to argue. And then I want to say the translator hasn't quite simply blown it because it's not that simple. There's a middle thing between these two poles and he's gotten confused by it. But first let's do the two poles. The, the concealment, the lethe and aletheia, we come across it as a positive ontological principle in at least three, four ways that I know of. It's the way the clearing necessarily withdraws in order to do its job as clearing, the the illumination in the room story. That's a certain kind of concealment and a very positive kind. There wouldn't be any any clearing if it wouldn't get out of the way and let you relate to the things in it. One, the clearing, there is also the earth which is part of the concealing. Remember, the earth, the, the earth is that which is concealed and struggles to stay concealed. The earth is a kind of, res- among other things, a reservoir of other practices that the culture might someday make important. So it's a whole richness and wealth, you'll hear him talk about that, uh, that, that, that is involved in what's concealed. 
there is this whole yeah this whole reservoir which is concealed and this concealing is a kind of safeguarding he says that is what's concealed is sort of not going to be banalized and uh, technologized and so forth it's a very lucky thing for things that are concealed that they're concealed he's talking about this on 45 about 10 lines down the giving of light simultaneously keeps safe and concealed darkness of its origin as the unlighted well there you can just see that the concealed darkness is, is the, the source of things it's the origin and it's where they're safe so all of that says boy is Lefe a good thing is uh, uh, concealing this and so forth now forgetting on the other hand is that is got, he comes in two stages the first stage of forgetting is the forgetting of being and it's that distortion of the clearing which we get in metaphysics which covers up and in that sense conceals but now we've got a different sense of conceals that's what confuses the footnote the translator that now hides or covers up metaphysics hides or covers up or conceals in a way that is of no positive merit in itself but cons- preserves a little bit of uh, what's really going on anyway wh- uh, what's going on with the clearing because remember metaphysics is a certain kind of distortion of the clearing what, what kind just to review well one it totalizes the clearing and says everything is X second it has some one being in terms of which it claims that everything is going to be explained it's the, in terms of some being is being and finally of course metaphysics th- ignores the clearing because it thinks it's got the correspondence truth that is it, what metaphysics says metaphysicians believe corresponds to the way things really are so there are three things wrong with metaphysics that it's, I mean, it's terribly seriously wrong it's very bad to have a totalizing view there's no place for the marginal practices it's very bad to have a uh, view in which you think that you can explain the mystery of beings that they're intelligible and that they exist at all by just finding another being that's bigger and better and they get the, the explanation of that and of course it misses the fact that it's a clearing at all it's doing all this if it just says if it takes any particular understanding of being as just that's how it is yeah and yet for all that you're not saying metaphysics is totally bad no and and for all that at least metaphysics in its mistaken and distorted attempt to get at something that's more more fundamental than beings uh, is has a, has, a, has a glimmer of is responsive to uh, uh, something that's going on that it will be even worse off when we forget when we lose metaphysics which and we have with technology we don't even anymore have that and you're willing to say it's also ascending or a, a, a being it's a way of revealing yes uh, well metaphysics is a distorted and totally you know missing it kind of response to ascending there, that is what it doesn't understand the sending as a sending but it, but it responds to it but it takes it up anyway yes it's a, it's a kind of response that doesn't realize it's a response that's another way to put it does any sending then realize it's simply a response what? does any sending understand itself not yet not yet no, no, no not yet okay. but of course so the, we've got it we've never had it right we ought to understand descending as ascending and be grateful for it but nobody's done that so every metaphysics has missed what's really going on and some of them have missed it more than others but that's not important for us right now so I, I'm, I'm going to read something on 41 now because I have written down that that's going to help you understand this um, no not 41 that was a there I wanted to just get straight about correspondence but I've already got straight about correspondence so look at 47 maybe you mean 41 do I mean 41 maybe in the middle about the danger and the 
Uh, no, I don't think I want to do that yet. I could look at it. Let's see. No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think, let me try 47. What was I looking for there? There's another corresponding there. Like, you know. Yeah, there where? 47? Yeah, last sentence of the uh, last whole paragraph. Yes, that's what I was interested in, but why I don't know yet. Uh, is it corresponding? I had marked, and it, in thus corresponding man is gathered into his own, that he within the safeguard element of the world may be immortal. That I don't want. I don't know what is, what I, why I got 47 or 41. I think we should, I think it was, yes, you're right. Liz has figured it out. I was going to talk about how to read corresponding, and those are two places where the word occurred. We don't need to think about that. Okay, uh, now, so first there's positive concealment. Then there's Zion's Forgessenheit, the forgetting of being. You're going to read a lot about that in the thing we're reading for next week. And that's metaphysics. And then comes where we are in technology, which is the forgetting of the distortion, where there isn't even any metaphysics anymore. So uh, we've lost all touch with the fact that there's any sending and any clearing. So we're all there, there is, as Heidegger sometimes put it, that puts it, for us now there are beings and nothing more. And that's nihilism in Heidegger's definition. That's, that's really the forgetting of the forgetting. Or the ultimate, uh, I mean, in, in the language of the translation, the oblivion of the oblivion. The oblivion stage is metaphysics, where the clearing is misunderstood, but it's still the clearing that's being misunderstood. Then comes the oblivion of the oblivion. Yes. Okay. And then there is beings and nothing else. I just wanted to say, this. I, as I said this this morning, I understood something that I've never understood before. So I'll just tell you. It's a kind of almost like a Heidegger joke. I mean, because sometimes Heidegger says, Plato is already nihilism. And then sometimes he says, you know, Nietzsche's nihilism. How could Plato also be nihilism? Well, if you're a metaphysician and think there's a supreme being, like the good, you already believe that there are beings and nothing more. Our whole tradition has from the start uh, believed that there was beings and nothing more. So in a certain sense, metaphysics is nihilism from the start, but then it gets even more nihilism when you end up with, you don't even believe there's a supreme super being, you just believe everything is this kind of middle-sized dry goods and nothing more, and then you're in real trouble. Yeah? Um, is having beings and nothing more enough, is that what makes our understanding into an unworld? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's sufficient. That's good, problem. that's good. Yes, I think that's right. And that is because we don't, if we don't understand being, of course we don't understand world either. And in our, not only in our understanding we don't, but in our, in our actions we don't. We're just coping with one thing after another. Um, Right, but uh, not only do we not realize, but, um, well... Uh, we sort of deny. Yeah. Yes. We, well, forgetting that you've forgotten it means that you don't even miss it, is a way to put it. I mean, what, if, if you... We've gotten... That's really the bad kind of forgetting. When you not only have distorted it, but you've got to the stage where you're not even distorting it anymore. There's no more metaphysics. But you're not even missing it, and you don't you don't feel that there's something left out. That's the oblivion of the oblivion. It seems to me that's important. I mean, it's it's our it's it's that our distress is so hidden from us, Heidegger thinks that uh, that, that that is so uh, we're so out of touch not only with the clearing but we're out of touch with the fact that we are suffering from being out of touch with the clearing. All of that is in this forgetting and forgetting. I think, yeah. I was thinking that the problem that we were having this morning when we were talking about this is it's the oblivion of the oblivion that you're talking about, not the oblivion qua oblivion. That's the last stage. I'm, on, I'm now in stage three, the oblivion of the oblivion. That's the really bad time. But the oblivion as such would be metaphysics. I suppose. Now, so now we therefore have... Therefore, there is something still working in metaphysics. It's right. That oblivion as such, or the predestinite as such, is not as bad as you may want to make it out because it could be worse therefore it's not that bad. I.e. it does get worse, namely the forgetfulness of the 
Yeah. That's true. But, the, but, and, but now I want to say, yeah, that's absolutely right. But, but we mustn't lose track of, and that's what the translator lost track of. There is just the world of difference, night and day, between the concealing business, which is the, uh, the, the positive reservoir safeguarding uh, marginal practices of earth, and both kinds of forgetting. The oblivion and the oblivion of the oblivion are mm-hmm. both... They're not even on the same track. It's not as if there's a, they're less earth in them or less safeguarding. They're just out of the touch with the positive phenomenon. Well, out of touch is too extreme. They are a reflection, a pale reflection, metaphysics, of the, of the concealing phenomena, the positive earth story. But the idea that because they have distorted it, they are still a mode of it, I think that is, that seems to me very odd because they've gone from being a kind of positive version of it to being, to have lost, let's see what they've lost. They've lost the reservoir character of other practices because they're totalizing. They've lost the earth character because everything should be present in all metaphysics. They've lost the safeguarding because metaphysics is trying to sort of lay its hands on it all and, and you can confirm it all. They've lost the withdrawing of the clearing because they've lost the clearing altogether. All they've got is, an, is a sense that there's something else that going on that we should be responsive to. I don't think that's enough to say that they've got the, the, any sense of the, of the concealing. But I see, I mean, I see Forrest is right. I mean, what the translator is saying is, well, there's, they're somehow related. But what I want to say is, related they might be, but there's all the difference between the way you understand it when you talk about concealing and, and aletheia as the most positive thing. Concealing is the most positive thing you can have. And this forgetting thing, which is at best a pale reflection of this positive thing and that has lost most of it, and at worst the beginning of a double thing, which will be the forgetting of the forgetting, which is, uh, you see, notice that it's got, goes to zero with the forgetting of the forgetting. Whereas, there would be nothing wrong with the concealing of the concealing, I think. It wouldn't go to zero. It would just, the uh, things would be even more hidden and protected. And I, I'm, I'm off on a, never mind, forget that. I have no idea about that. John, uh, for us. The emphasis you have on leaving out the importance of revealing. It's like yeah. leaving world out of Earth. Oh, okay, right. Oh, you couldn't... So, concealing is positive, but it's not just right. positive either. When everything is unconcealed, or everything is concealed, that's not quite a right either. No, I agree with both of you on that. Right. Concealing is the positive, is, the po- is, a, is part of a positive dimension which yeah. contains the unconcealing as equal to it. Right. But the... Forgetting, another way to put it is, I think, forgetting isn't on any dimension like that. It isn't as if there's a... For, maybe that's another way to see how different they are. There's nothing... Uh, that's interesting. There's nothing like the, the dimension forgetting, unforgetting. Uh, the, the, it's, it's not in that, that... Even in that sort of structure. Whereas, you see that? I mean, concealing gets its richness over against unconcealing. Earth struggles with world. But forgetting doesn't get its richness by struggling with something or being related to something called remembering it just is a distortion yeah go ahead isn't there remembering of being and that's what I do all remembering right? being the remembering of being yeah the remembering of being is getting in touch with being but it's not a mode of relating to forgetting it seems to me I mean you can remember being even if you're just you know let's hope in the next stage when there's a new God or a new understanding of being we're remembering it all the time that is we're thankful and, and we're uh, uh, and we know we're receivers that doesn't mean that we're therefore having a constant struggle with forgetting I don't think uh, yeah but this is the relationship again between homecoming and hurry or wandering uh, it does have a relationship to forgetting because you couldn't have remembering without forgetting well, you couldn't have homecoming without going away from home. This is the very little and early, early, you know, middle stuff. 
don't but, care but, about but, yeah. You yes. can have a turning. Right, but, but, that, um, but I'm trying to that think, that seems to me a different structure. That just says, because when you return, then you can throw away the, the forgetting as if it was a kind of ladder, and you're back where you would have been if you'd never been forgetting. It isn't as if you've uh, got something new, unless you're a Hegelian. No, I don't, I don't think you can, if you're going to have homecoming, it's going to be different than never having yeah. gone outside of home. Huh. So, yeah, so, the so remembering is going to be different. Yeah. Because you need the forgetting to go through the remembering. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm not, I mean, homecoming, certainly you have to be wandering. But when you get home, in your homecoming, have you got something you couldn't have had if you hadn't yeah. been wandering? Definitely in middle high school. That's interesting. I also think that's what he means here on 39 when he talks about um, a surmounting, that destroying surmounting is similar to what happens when in the human realm one gets over grief or pain. Well, that is the, that's the crucial line. I, all right, I would have said, what, when you get over grief or pain and you've recovered and you've convalesced, uh, are you, you could say, and you're a stronger person for having gotten over the grief and the pain, person. or a different person. Well, you'd have to be a stronger person to make the case that homecoming was, uh, where the well, forgetting was necessary. No, I mean, at the very least, you wouldn't be returning home to the same spot, right? Because you'd right. be a different but the, person. But yeah, but and the, then, I mean, Forrest would like it to be your stronger... That's right. That's the, stronger. It, it would be... I mean, Nietzsche is clear that convalescing puts you... You're stronger than you were when you got sick. Nietzsche says, you know, uh, well, that, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Now, I don't know if that's in here. I mean, I... See, it seems to me that Heidegger hasn't got that, but I don't know. I mean, what I would have thought is Heidegger thinks that there is this state which would be the right state to be in, where we are receivers and know we're receivers of being and, 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 uh, and understand gods as gods and so forth. And we might have had that from the start, but we didn't. But when we finally get it, he, later Heidegger says we could just sort of stop worrying about the tradition and forget the whole history of being once we get there. Like, what yeah, do you that's think? what I was going to say. I was going to say, but he says before that the history is, uh, you know, important because, but if you're, I you want to say now he's giving that up. Well, I say that eventually I'll try to find the line. He, very late Heidegger says we should stop worrying about the history of being. But the, the, that's not really conclusive because one would say that we really shouldn't stop worrying about the history of being until we're in the new one. And Heidegger doesn't think we're in the new one. So whatever he means there, I think he means that... Uh, well, I don't know what he means there. If I find it, I'll bring it in. Yeah. Well, based on the hundred of those yeah. poems, the idea is that uh, you have to go away from home in order to come back home to homecoming. And then it is, it is really different. You can never really know what it is to be at home until you've gone and come back. Well, that's the fortunate fall story. I mean, Heidegger certainly may have something like that structure, but what I want to know is, uh, it's, everything for us says is sure, you wouldn't have homecoming if you hadn't gone away from home, but when you've got homecoming, have you got something that you couldn't have got if you hadn't gone away from home? That's the fortunate fall. That you, that's the Hegelian Christian structure. I don't know whether he- Heidegger buys a lot of Christian structures. But I think this is, he gets this from Hergerlin. Yeah, well, Hergerlin, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the question is, in Hergerlin, homecoming is great, and homecoming is certainly where we're going to get, because we've gone away. I mean, Heide- every, we're all going to agree to that, that we have, we have been out in the cold, we have been wandering, we've had <coughs> metaphysics, and now we're going to come home. Does Hergerlin say that once we come home, we'll be better than we had been if we hadn't been wandering? Not, not better, but we would not, only by going uh, and, and having this kind of contrast can we really know who we are. Well, wait, wait a minute, that, that's a new not move. I, I'm lost with that. Wait, first, only by doing that can we have homecoming, that's sure. Yeah. The question is, when we've got homecoming, have we got something we couldn't have had, I mean, other than homecoming, have we got some profound new phenomena that, and a new way of behaving that we couldn't have arrived at except by having gone through the metaphysics and the wandering and the nihilism. I think we have a different understanding, whether we have different practices. Like and we understand who we are, namely receivers of understandings of being. But the question is, couldn't we have understood that without this detour through metaphysics and nihilism? Not according to both Hegel and, and Little Heidegger, I think that's... that's uh, really? Okay, well... Uh, but that I, doesn't mean we're bigger and better and stronger somehow. I don't well, think that's the Deeper, then. More authentic, whatever we're... Better understanding of who we are. Well, one, I'd like to see it in Middle Heidegger. Show me. Yeah. And secondly, I, what you, you, you're intimating that maybe later Heidegger 
dropped it. Is that what you think? Oh, he drops homecoming in this sense, for yeah. sure. Okay. Right? Okay, well, it could be, I mean, we can entertain this possibility that middle Heidegger thought that we could only have gotten, had, had this Christian Hegelian idea, that we could only have really understood us ourselves as disclosers and receivers of being and have the right thankful attitude toward being by having made the metaphysical mistake of gone to the bottom of nihilism and now come back. That's, and maybe... Later, Heidegger didn't think that anymore. I don't know. This yeah. is the whole story in the middle about strangeness. The need for yeah, strangeness. the stranger comes in, for instance, in the poem we read, to the dinner from yeah. wandering outside. Well, and the introduction of metaphysics. Okay. Also. And, and suffering over the, the pain in the Stopping. thresholds. Yeah. yeah, there is all that in middle Heidegger. Yeah. The, the homelessness and nihilism and this pervindum or recovery overcoming surmounting of metaphysics, that all gets in the, on the question of being. And... Uh, so at least you know, this was in 55, but he still has the homelessness. And it's kind of, he says that the nihilism <coughs> is kind of willing, it wills homelessness. Yes, yes, but now the question is, keep your eyes open as you read right. the next assignment. I was going to say, I bet it's in there. There's going to be homelessness for sure, because we don't dwell. And the question is, is the homelessness a necessary condition for our becoming dwellers. That's the one way to put it. Is having gone through homelessness in the late Heidegger now, but we're going to go to read 57 next for next time. Keep your eyes open. I don't know whether he's going to answer it. Does he still think that you've got to go through this fall to get to the right relation, that is to be authentic disclosers and receivers of understandings of being? I don't know. Great to have a good question. Okay, should we go on? And we go on. Uh, where are we? Uh, we've done the forgetting hunt question then. But I have a whole lot more stuff here that I have to read to myself to see if we've done it about this issue. Just a second. Well, it's important to know. I'm going to say one more thing about this issue. That Heidegger, it's not just the translator. Heidegger himself is failing to make a distinction which... I think he would want to make. He's just he is going to use the word for concealing, both as this kind of safeguarding earth like withdrawing, and as a normal German word for any kind of hiddenness. And that's going to be confusing. So in forty six you can see this happening. Uh, I think. Is it on forty six? No. Yes, the last sentence. The coming to pass of oblivion is not not only let's fall. The translation hasn't got from remembrance. You can cross that out. Doesn't matter though. The coming to pass of oblivion not only lets fall into concealment. Now see that's bad. If you fall into concealment, then concealment's a bad thing. And if concealment's a bad thing, then you can't tell it from forgetting. Uh, so he's got so we so there is a problem. I mean, I would like to be able to tell you that concealment that's one good thing. That's a good thing always. Oblivion that's a bad thing always. Concealment is for Borgenheit. Uh, uh, oblivion is for Gessenheit. It isn't so simple. But I I I think the following that the point is to keep your eye on the phenomenon. And when you keep your eye on the phenomenon, you won't get confused. You'll understand the difference between a good kind of uh, concealing and the bad kind of concealing. The good, the good kind which preserves and safeguards and the bad kind which covers up and distorts. Just keep your eye on the ball. Okay, now let's see. And when you try to recover metaphysics, which you're going to hear about uh, more in the, in the reading for next time, ask yourself whether the point is to recover the metaphysics or to recover what the metaphysics has distorted. See, if you, I mean, I think that it's clearly that's what he has to have in mind. Keep in mind what he has to have in mind, and then see if you can make sense of it that way. Uh, let's see. So what we've got is, we should be attuned to a style, I'm still thinking about this, which is, of course, concealed. And it's being concealed is a good thing, too. That's the withdrawing. But forgetting is losing touch with that style. 
either partially as in metaphysics or double concealing which is losing touch with the way you've lost touch with it and that's the really bad situation I agree with Forrest that the really bad situation you've got to have double concealing uh, yeah um, when you say we can be attuned to a style which is in which is concealed um, is this what will happen at, is this, would this be after the turning that's a, yes, we could have been, I think, once, but we never were. Right. Yes, no, no, the pre-Socratics were in tune right. with the style, even okay. though they didn't know it. Okay. They were in tune with priests, but they didn't but know it. But we would, so <coughs> if we got into relation to technology, right, we would realize that technology was just a mode of revealing, was just one way And we'd be in tune with it. And we'd be in tune with it. And we'd bring so it in that out. sense, it wouldn't be concealed from us as a mode of revealing. That's but right. It would, but when it was working, insofar as it was working, it would be it concealed would be from withdrawing. us like the light in the room. Okay. That's right. So we would if be we wanted to pay attention to it, we would know it was there and sort of in some sense. That's uh, right. We, we could be in tune with it, we could, uh, and we would somehow, we'd know it was there, sense it or something, but insofar as we were busy in our, uh, in our, in our activity, it would just be in the background. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. Now, here's another way to try to make the distinction I'm still trying to make. The, the, how different Fergessenheit is from Aletheia. We want to recover from Fergessenheit, for, for, from this forgetting, both times, the metaphysical forgetting and the forgetting of the forgetting. Where, and, but we don't want to recover from Aletheia. I mean, that, I mean, that is from the Lethe of Aletheia, the concealedness. You don't recover from concealedness. You just, you just see it as a very positive, fruitful part of the struggle between earth and world. You'd be, you'd be well off if all Fergessenheit, all forgetting were gone. And there you, you, then you'd be in good shape. But you couldn't imagine a condition in which all concealing was gone. You'd be in terrible shape. You wouldn't even be a human being anymore. That, so they're pretty different. Pretty different when the more one of them is gone, namely forgetting, the better off you are. And the more the other one is gone, the worse off you are. I mean, that's, I'm trying to find ways of making clear that this footnote is misleading. Yeah. I don't see how with the Aletheia, the, the more you the more you have of that, the better off you are. Yes, the more there is the richness of the struggle between earth and world, the more well, that, there is concealing, struggling against revealing. But that's not the struggle isn't the concealing. No, okay, but the more you have the concealing brought out by the struggle, yeah. the better well, off you are. Well, but that's the brought out aspect. Okay. Of it. It's not the concealing. Well, aspect, so I mean, you can't. Sure, it doesn't matter because you can't ever say the more the forgetting is brought out by anything, the better off. Well, I think you can because he's saying here the restore. Well, he has restore surmounting in the translation, so you have to restore the forgetting. Well, I want to say you have to restore what's been forgotten by the forgetting height. It would make no sense to want to restore the forgetting height. That's really the difference between us. There's nothing good to be gotten from restoring the forgetting height. What you really want to do is go through it, as it says in the German at one point. Dorf, you go through it. I, I was going to talk about that. In fact, maybe we should talk about that. Yeah, uh, Edward, you want to say something? Okay. So, where is this passage that we got with the through it this morning? Uh, Oh, that's okay for next time then. No wonder we're not doing it. Keep your eye open. Again, Forrest is raising the right questions to think about. Keep your eye open for in what way we want to recover the, for what, we, what is forgotten in this forgetting and, and, and how we're supposed to understand that given that, that I'm saying the, the, the more forgetting the worse and the less forgetting the better. Why would one want to recover any forgetting? And you may have an answer to that. But let's say that, I think, let me go on here. I'm now worried about running out of time. Just saying. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have two other quotes. Let's see if I can get anything from them in a hurry. Uh, well, this is, the, we have to read this on 39 because it's relevant. This is this business of overcoming in the right way and the wrong way to overcome the te- technology on the, third line of 39. Maybe we have to go even further. I guess we have to go back to the bottom of 38. Because being is the essence of technology has adapted itself into and framing. Because man's way of working, remember we have to keep fixing that, belongs to being's way of working. Inasmuch as being's working needs the working of man in order to remain kept safe as being in keeping with its own working in the midst of whatever is and thus as being 
uh, to, to work. For this reason, the working of technology cannot be led into the change of its destiny without the cooperation of the working of man. All right, so far that's just fine. Through this cooperation, however, technology will not be overcome by men. That is, just gotten rid of. On the contrary, the coming to presence of technology will be surmounted. That is, you know, and another word could be recovered. That's the same word, right? Re- we could say recovered in a way that restores it to its yet concealed truth. Now again, keep your eye on the phenomena. What does that, would that mean? That would mean we would get technology as a sending, as a gift, as a mode of givenness. That's its concealed truth, namely that it is a mode of givenness. This restoring surmounting, that is, this getting in touch with technology as a, 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 a mode of being, a mode of uh, truth, is similar to what happens when in the human realm one gets over grief or pain. Now that just means, it seems to me, you've been in this uh, bad state, distorted in technology, and if you could get into the right relation to technology, you'd get over the pain of having your essence distorted. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, does it mean something different to you? I no. think that's, that's no, it, it means to me this, this kind of double negative, forgetfulness of the forgetfulness. So that's why I... You mean you want to get over the forgetfulness of the But that is getting over it by being forgetful of the forgetfulness. Really? Yeah. I would have thought that you, want to, you would want to get very clear about the forgetfulness and not forget it, but uh, sort of put it behind you. Uh, that, that's is that all right? That means, yeah, that means overcoming it. Okay, well, you certainly want you're to stop... through it. Okay, you want to, you want to get, you're going to get through with it. Oh, through, through it. No, I think and actually getting through it, which means you have to engage in that kind of forgetfulness. You problem. have to engage in it. That we're, we are disagreeing still. I mean, we are stuck in it, I think, but we will get out, we should get out of it. You think we should keep it around and sort of uh, keep, keep, our, keep our forgetfulness around? <laughs> keep it around only by forgetting it. <laughs> I know that sounds esoteric, but these are these double negatives in it. Okay, I, I mean, I don't have any phenomena there. My 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 phenomena indicator goes to zero. Right? So I'll have to I'll have to I have to go I have to go on. It's, the air is too rarefied. Um, uh, okay, I want to do one more because uh, this might be relevant to what Forrest just said. It's the sense in which the forgetting is supposed to be part of the saving. This is very so. This is going to be very important on page 43, starting with the second paragraph about four lines down. In the entrapping, what comes to presence is this, that being dismisses and puts away its truth into oblivion in such a way that being denies its own mode of givenness. I'm always putting it into other language, which is just easier to understand. When accordingly the danger is as danger, then the entrapping, that is the way being itself entraps its truth with oblivion, this is where Forrest and I are going to have something to say, uh, comes expressively to pass. That is, I take it that appropriating or giving comes into its own. Uh, That is... Then let's read it again. Then the entrapping, that is the way being itself entraps its truth with oblivion, comes expressly to pass. That is, we experience the danger as the danger. Is that what you think that is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when this entrapping with oblivion does come expressly to pass, that is, to, is seen as the, is a, the danger as the danger, then oblivion as such turns in. Then... I would have thought, we both would agree, oblivion goes away. That is, forgetting goes away, because when you see the danger as the danger, you're not forgetting anything anymore. Well, there's these two words after you read. You mean and abide? That's not in the German. German. That's not in the German. Oh, that that makes all the difference, maybe. That's right. If oblivion turned in and abided, uh, who knows, we'd have a problem. But But it turns in, not away, or goes away. It turns in. Yeah, I don't know what it turns in. I mean, what I would like it to do is to turn into something else. But no. to turn into something else, we don't know quite what the oblivion as such turns in. And I say, what I really think when I read that is, well, good night, oblivion, where you don't have to pay any attention to you anymore. Uh, I don't know what it means. Uh, you know, that's the German. It means sort of turn in at an inn and, 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 and go to bed. 
I don't know what he's saying there. This rescue, thus rescued uh, through this turning from falling away out of remembrance, it is no longer oblivion. Isn't that sort of on my side? I mean, so now we're not forgetting it anymore. It's not as if the oblivion is still around. The oblivion has turned into something else. That's when I hear turning in, I really, I know it isn't in the German, but I think it's like the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. So once the oblivion is recognized as, and, and, and we get over the oblivion because we recognize the danger as the danger, then uh, it, it's, not a, it's, it's no longer falling out of remembrance, so it's no longer oblivion. Now, it seems like the next sentence is important. Okay, with such internal, the oblivion relating to being safekeeping is no longer the oblivion of being, but rather turning in thus, it turns about into the safekeeping of being. So it sounds like, I mean, in a way, it sounds like it's supporting both of you. It's saying, okay. look, it's no longer the oblivion of being, right? But it's still present as a kind of concealment, the safe. Safekeeping, the kind of concealment that is safe. Okay, the, the, the oblivion relating to being self-keeping. Well, I don't think it, that. Well, I, the way I read it, the the, the oblivion relating to being self-keeping uh, is no longer the oblivion of being. Uh, I see. I wonder what that. What's going on there? I would have thought it would be concealing there. I see what you mean. It's related to being safekeeping is no longer the oblivion of being but rather turning in us it turns about into the safekeeping of being so oblivion that is distortion how can distortion turn into safekeeping exactly my point how well how though well no no how is another matter but it's certainly what Heidegger is saying distortion well every well, well, well you, I mean, you can hear it either way, right? You can hear it as it remains and turns into it, or you can, you can I think, hear it. You want to hear I don't hear a caterpillar, caterpillar or butterfly. Or no, no, okay, it, doesn't, it doesn't turn into anything. This is I'm Kevin and I'm Colin, mm. and it's a whole series of I'm words mm. here, but it doesn't yeah. turn. I think it, it, the German does not support it. Caterpillar butterfly. No, not at all. It turns into the safekeeping of being. I don't know what that means, but until I can hear a phenomenon that tells me what it means, I will leave it to everybody to worry to about. Safe. Forgetfulness of forgetfulness. How and why would anybody want to keep safe the forgetfulness of forgetfulness? Because John, that's overcoming it. <laughs> the only phenomenon he offers is this uh, grief and pain. And if you think about mourning, you know, that the mourning practices which keep around the mm-hmm. through the memorialization or monument, the monuments or through um, particular styles of remembrance and rituals and rites, and you can tell a story about that, then perhaps. Um, there's a certain memorialization to the forgetting height which must be in place or set in place. Well, I see that in grief you interiorize the the other person and you, so to speak, keep them around. That sounds like remembering the forgetting. Right. Remembering the That's right. What I don't understand there is how you could get grief and pain into the same sentence because grief is something about how your world breaks down and how you internalize the other and so forth. And pain, when you get over pain, the story is you just get over it. You've forgotten it. You're done with it. You, the more you forget it, the better. Nobody goes around trying to see that they you know, preserve, preserve a memory of their pain. Well, in the sequence of grief and pain, I would put them together into a... Yeah, so would I. And you think that the pain, the grief, the pain, it must be the pain of grief, in other words. Yeah. Well, I used to think that that was very important about grief, and it may still be, but I don't get it yet. Yeah? Grief doesn't necessarily have to go away, though. Like, if you have severe back pain, and you have to go to work every day, um, eventually you just sort of cope. You just go to work, and the back pain is just your leg down part of what's going on. Yeah, but this you is... Focus on it, you think about would you say that you've gotten over it? Well, yeah, in some sense, I think you would. I would say you've just... Say well, How about, is that an appropriate use of verbindum that you did that? Verbindum. Recover. I wouldn't think <coughs> so. I wouldn't say that you recovered from it when you've just gotten so you can go on anyway. Like a re- recovering overcoming. I mean, you just don't know what verbindum is. Yeah, well, it's got to do with overcoming. Sort but it's of not overcoming. What? So but it's, it's, not not it's not overcoming. It's not overbindum. It's, it's definitely recovering from, convalescing from. Uh, and 
and I guess we just there's a lot we don't understand in here. I grant you. I don't know, and I don't understand. I mean, I have no phenomenon to put why anybody would want to keep around the forgetting once they remembered what they were, what they had forgotten. Uh, then they would say, good, now I've remembered what I've forgotten. I don't have to re- keep forgetting it. The issue is to me whether it makes any difference in the ongoing sense. As you said, if you have a pain, if you're over the pain, you completely forget about it, it's gone, and completely healed. But if this is uh, truly still historical in the sense, it's still with you in some sense. It's still there. It has to remain in some sense as a historical uh, moment in where you currently are. So I don't think it's just a physical pain. Uh, Well, it's really a funny thing here. It's as if one of us is on the grief line and one of us is on the pain line. You want to you want to not forget your grief, and the more you forget your pain, the better. And which are we supposed to follow? I mean, nobody wants to remember their pain. Yeah. The next, the rest of that paragraph is about the historical sending of another destiny. Right. And what are we going to do about that? Well, that makes it sound more like the grief story. I would think. Really? I would have thought when when when, when you got the new one, are you still supposed to remember the old one? Well, the new one unfolds out of the old one and is in some sense present but also transcendent. And w- w- when you've got the new one, are you still remembering the old one or are once you've got the new well, one, you don't have to remember the old one? I mean, you're not keeping it in mind, right? Um, but you've got it interiorized. Or, well, you've got, I mean, it's being brought, al- I mean, it, it's being brought along in having been in the way it's been transcended. Right. This is this is a turning, not a parousia. Not a what? Parousia. It's. It, I mean, it's not a, a total breaking in from nowhere or from above or whatever. It's a turning. It's, and so, as a turning, it's going to. Okay. Well, maybe we could have a compromise coming out here. That and so far as it's a turning, I I, I will try to think that you should hold on to the forgetting, though it's hard. It's but a turning once it's in, turning, not a turning okay, into. Okay. Okay. But when that turning gets a new destiny and a new God, then I think it's, you can totally forget the whole previous forgetting. But, um, but think about the history of being we've had so far, right? I mean, um, every next, all unfoldings of history, right, are unfoldings from what has come before, right, stem from them, do move beyond them, right, but do... And so, in that sense, no, you're not focused on the Christian understanding of being when you're in the subject of Christian understanding of being. But that that has been is, in some sense, present to the way it is now. Yeah, but that's all within the history of metaphysics. I don't know well, if that's, that's going to be... Well, that's why I'm saying it's important that you go there's on a the big, history. Yeah, but that, there's a but big break here, of course. And I want to say... And I think what later Heidegger is going to come along and say... I mean, I, I think, you know, that you two may be right about this. But I think later Heidegger is going to come along and say, if you really had this big break, you'd be better off forgetting the whole thing, the grief, the pain, the whole metaphysical And I thought we were at the end of history, is the other question, right? I thought that with technology and in history, and and here it makes it look like... It sounds like they were not at the end of history. That's part of the problem. You want to say something about it? Uh, Okay, let's, as long as uh, uh, everybody uh, has brought up, let's go on reading, because we haven't really got to the end of history part which is very interesting and puzzling. So we've got the, the fact that the, the, this very puzzling thing with the interning, the oblivion relating to being safekeeping is no longer the oblivion of being. So somehow the oblivion is still around, but it's not oblivion anymore. The, and the, I don't understand that, but I, I see that he says that. It, but rather turning in us, it turns about into the safekeeping of being. That's sort of the grief story, I guess that now it's something that we remember, that we've been through, and we've, uh, and, and it's, and it's going to be preserved that way or something. I don't know. But then, here's the next thing. When the danger is, is the danger. And that's what will be happening when we get over the oblivion as, the oblivion of the oblivion, that's sure. When the danger is as the danger, with the turning about of oblivion, the safe keeping of being comes to pass, world comes to pass. That worlds comes to pass and that the thing things, this is the distant advent of the uh, coming to presence that is the, really the, the there it means the, the coming into its own most of being itself. That really means at that point you're going to get a new God. Uh, 
I think. Uh, but but uh, you wouldn't know it from that. But I thought we were reading a different one. Where's the other one? We're on 39. Okay, go back to 39. Because there you can tell that it means a new God. I mean, the one I just read, you never know whether you thought it was a new God or just a lot of things singing. But then I think later Heidegger is going to be happy with just a lot of things singing. But here, I'm going to read now about 10 lines from the top of 39. That the surmounting of a destining of being, here and now, the surmounting of inframing, each time comes to pass out of the arrival of another destiny. See, that's a reconfiguring. That's a whole new understanding of being. A destiny that does not allow itself either to be logically and historicologically predicted, of course not, because it's a total gestalt shift, or to be metaphysically constructed as a sequence belonging to a process of history, of course not, it's not something Hegelian. It's a real, only a real reconfiguring, finally, can surmount and frame it. Now what we're arguing about is, when that happens, are you still in the business of the safekeeping of forgetting, or has that been a kind of transitional state where uh, you are preparing the way for the surmounting of inframing? What's the word for surmounting, I wonder? Which it's is all forbidden. It's all forbidden. Yeah, he's uh, just doing a slash with that. So it's surmounting. He wants to get the idea of surmounting. So the... So the, er, the, the Ferwunden of inframing each time comes to pass out of the arrival of another destiny. Isn't that interesting? So then the new, and the new destiny will be one in which there won't, we will have you know, the clearing as the clearing. And the first stage of getting the clearing as the clearing will be to see the danger as the danger. And the question is sort of what's the role of forgetting in seeing the danger as the danger? And what's the role of forgetting in the next stage when there's a new God, but it's a, and we have got out of that stage, and we're seeing uh, the clearing as the clearing? Because even here, answering you, it can't just be another metaphysical epic coming along. You would Could think it? That. You I wouldn't think so. Not. I mean, you can't think that because in framing is the end of the line. So it's got to be uh, the new God with the new understanding of being is sent. And that one is... I just don't see... I mean, I think that's got to be right. He doesn't say that here. No, he doesn't. Um, and, uh, and that... Uh, well, and, he, and it's all around. Um, it sounds as if the surmounting comes to pass through the new destiny, which is still stemming from, right? I don't know what came before. Um, which makes it sound like less than a big break. It but sounds like what? Less of a big break. break. And yet, it does seem also like yeah, it better be a, be a big break. I think at this point, he's not thinking about another God. Really? At this point. Yeah. Really? Not another God in 49. You mean he's given up the idea or another no, God I or hasn't got it yet? No, he's back to the idea what? of another God. I think he's going to come back to that. I see. That only another God can but, the but there's a lot of other God talk here on 39. Or that's what we are. How about 43? Well, I just want to see all my other God. What do you want to say? Especially concerning technology. Okay. Yeah, the God. advent of a, a coming to presence will being itself. No, if that isn't a new God, how about back to 39? That's, that, yeah, that's certainly not a new God as such. Yeah, I think... Maybe not. I don't have any any clear statement that it's in the I think God. he talks about the possibility of God again and the divine because we'll have a sense of the divine. Okay. But, he, but the he, issue isn't. It's having a new sense of the divine or knowing what the divine is, not the new God. Well, on 35, though, remember this is exactly the same set of lectures as the question concerning technology. Uh, Remember at the top of 35, could it be that the fine arts are called to poetic revealing? Could it be that revealing lays claim to the arts most primordially, primally, so that they, for their part, may expressly foster the growth of the saving power, may awaken and found anew our look into that which grants, and so forth. And that's, that always seemed to me new God talk, to found anew. You don't think so? Not necessarily, that's all I mean. Well, it needn't be a God, you mean, any a thinker will do, but it has to be a, a, a reconfiguring... Okay, something, something of that sort. Okay, sure, sure. yes, it doesn't have to a be a dispensation God. dispensation of some kind. Right, it has, and it has to be a dispensation that, that's going to reconfigure, and that we know what that has to be, either a God or a thinker or a statesman or a work of art. Uh, one, something has to come along and do it. I guess we're not disagreeing about that. Uh, but I think at this stage it's more the possibility of the return of the gods with flood, but uh, 
Well, that's a, the, that's a different thing. There are yeah. plural gods yeah. that have fled. Uh, there seems to be a need for something to focus a com- total new understanding of being uh, uh, to come along, whatever that is. Uh, okay, let me say one more thing, and then you can... So one more thing you should keep your eyes open for as you read the next essay, which I'm going to keep my eyes open for, is whatever this sort of total new understanding of being story is that we just got into, and whatever it needs to do it, a new God or a new something or other, is he still holding that in 57? Or does he think in 57 that things thinking is enough to save us? I mean, the question, to put it another way, things thinking is part of this period. It was written at the same time as this, 49. When he does the thing thinking essay, and this, it sounds like things thinking are a kind of holding pattern which will save us, well, not save us, which, will, which can resist technology, and, and that's fine, but that they're only sort of waiting until a new God comes along or a new dispensation, a new sending of a total understanding of being. Now, is he still thinking that in uh, the, the essay you're going to read for next time? Or does he get to the point of view where just a world of things thinking would be enough to, 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 that, uh, and that we wouldn't need a new, a new total understanding of being and a new God? I don't know. I want, I'm all eager to find out. Okay, well, that, that we'll have a good vacation. We'll think about all that when you get back.